How's it going everyone? It's Zerker and today we're going to do a short review on Batum. My history with Batum begins back in 2016 I believe. I had just started getting back in anime, just finished watching Black Lagoon and somebody had recommended I check out Batum. I really enjoyed the anime at the time and I wasn't into manga at that point but I knew that there was a manga for it. Fast forward a couple years and I was able to get my hands on the series in manga format and I jumped on the opportunity because I don't think if I would pass this one up, I would have gotten another chance to. First and foremost, Batum does one thing really well and it does everything else mediocre at best. Batum has a tendency to be repetitive in the way it does things. And what I mean is as soon as you think that these people are gonna get home or off this island, they end up back on the island. As soon as they kill somebody, or at least you think they killed somebody, that person comes back. And then rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. On top of all the repetitiveness that happens in Batum, another situation that always happens in this series with every female character, especially with Himiko here, who is our second main character, is that they're always getting put into a situation that involves the R word, or in some way exposing them, or exposing their body in some lewd or seductive way, and they always end up getting rescued by whoever. On top of all that, <laughs> you'll notice that every bad guy that tries to do the R word or the M word, or whatever to these female characters is always the fat ugly guy and if you know what i'm talking about this is this is a recurring thing in anime manga and the henti world that the bad guy is always the fat ugly character and then the person that rescues them is always the handsome muscular dude so he's always rescuing her the other guy i forget what his name like ryota or something like that he's always rescuing female characters while all these fat ugly dudes are always trying to do some vile thing to him. That's a recurring thing in this series. So it's just constantly repetitive, constantly recurring bad people that don't die, constantly returning to the island, yada, yada, yada. The one thing that Batum does really well, <laughs> I hate to say that, but this is the only thing that they do really well, is the weapon types. So in any standard battle royale genre, you usually have a f your firearms, your melee weapons, and grenades. Standard flair for any BR. Batum, on the other hand, utilizes weapons called BIMs. And I believe there are six or seven of these. I think there's seven in total. And each BIM has their own strength and weaknesses. So you have the Cracker BIM, which is basically you throw it. Once it makes contact with something, it explodes. So the downside with that is it's one directional. If you miss your shot, you potentially harm the person, but you also expose your position. But on top of that, it probably has the strongest explosion of all the BIMs. Follow that up, there's a thing called the implosion bim, which is very similar to the cracker bim in that when you throw it, once it makes contact with something, instead of exploding, it creates an implosion. So yeah, it's very similar to strength and weaknesses to the cracker, you know, once you throw it, it's basically set and forget it. Once it makes contact with something, it implodes. If you miss, you've given your position away. Next up, there is the timer bim and basically it's in its name you can set a timer from one second up to i believe 10 seconds and once you throw it you got to time it just right it has a very similar explosion type to the cracker however you are limited to the time so if you don't time it right you're screwed because then you give your position away and then on follow that one up there is the remote bim and that one is you can set it in a place you have a little wristwatch that has I think like up to eight or whatever bims that you can use. And once the person falls for your, into your trap, you can just hit a button on your watch and they explode. Then there is the homing bim. So basically you hold this one up, you target your target and it'll home in on them. So it'll, it'll can just chase them down until they get tired or they trip up or they potentially trick it which is a thing that you can do. However, that BIM, the homing one, has the weakest explosion of probably all of them. There is one called the spitting oil fire BIM or something like that. Uh, basically this one, you throw it, it has four little contraptions on the each end and once it makes contact or once it engages, it shoots out a line of oil and flame, creating a 
four-walled fire pretty much trapping your target in between potentially walls of fire which then you can do what you need to do to eliminate them then there is the what the hell is it called oh the flame gas canister and this one i think it's self-explanatory but you just basically chuck this damn thing and once it engages it shoots out a cloud of smoke of toxic fire and gas and downside with this one obviously if you are in the direction of the wind it's probably going to blow right back into you killing you uh if the wind is blowing in a completely different direction than you need it to do to go you basically just giving your position away and the nice thing with this one it does a large area of damage uh, but I believe it's pretty slow moving, kind of depends on movement of the wind. And lastly, there is the barrier bim. So this one just creates a barrier around you for protection. However, I do believe this one has a durability to it. So once you hit zero for durability, it doesn't work anymore. In my opinion, that's literally the only good thing with Batum is the bims. So since you're on this island, you're attacking these people with these explosive devices. How do you get off this island? Well, every character has, I don't know if it'll show. Every character has a chip implanted into their hand. And this chip provides a couple features. For the user or the one implanted with it, they can like tap it or something like that. And it'll create a, or send out a sonar radar kind of wave. So you can potentially somehow, they don't explain this, but somehow when you do that, you can see where people are at. I don't know how, cause it's just a little crystal thing in your hand, but they don't explain how it's like linked up to your eyes or some shit to where you can see these people. On top of that, the people monitoring this game of Batum that you're participating in, they can see your vitals. They see if you're alive, uh, where you're at on these on the island. And lastly, these chips are your token to get freedom. You have to kill or somehow acquire up to eight of these chips. Once you get those, they send in a chopper or a rescue team and they take you away and you get your reward. I forget what the reward is, but it's, it's a significant amount of money. So yeah, that's essentially Batum. I'm not going to go too depth into it because I don't want people who are looking to get into Batum to be spoiled too much as far as what happens in the story. These are just my gripes and some of the things that I noticed while reading it. Batum has two alternate endings. So you have two volumes of 26 that you would have to collect if you wanted the full set. You have the light volume and you have the dark volume. They are significantly different in size. The top one is the light and the bottom one is the dark. They both start out the same. It's like the first couple pages are exactly the same and then they split off from there. As far as the endings are concerned, I don't have a particular one I really liked. It's nice to have the alternate endings and you can choose which one you liked. But for me, neither ending really did anything for me. I think Junya Inoue milked the shit out of Batum. I don't blame him for it because this is his way of income. This is him putting food on the table. So I understand why he tried to keep this series going as long as he did. But for me, Batum should have ended in about 15 volumes in total, maybe 12 at, at, at the very least. I think 15 would have gave him enough opportunity to do the, all the things he wanted to do without becoming repetitive in the story. I think 26 volumes is just far too long. So if you like battle royale stuff, whether it be like video games or if you like the battle royale manga, you will probably find some enjoyment for Batum. If you don't like BR or battle royale, you probably will not enjoy Batum. Simple as that. I watched a couple reviews. Granted, these reviews front were like seven, eight years old. <laughs> old at this point but a lot of people a lot of these reviews said this this manga is great this is an amazing manga this is a masterpiece of a manga everyone who reads manga needs to read batum i disagree <laughs> I, I disagree a lot i would never put batum in the level of masterpiece i think that is an insult to the only manga that i would consider to be a masterpiece and that manga is berserk i think berserk is a masterpiece and i would never <laughs> i think that is an insult to berserk i think it's just batum is that very best okay am i upset that i spent the money to acquire batum as a collector i'm happy i have it and if i ever do get to the point where i think i just don't need it in my series and or my collection anymore it'll be a quick easy sell there's a lot of people that are interested in it whether it's for reading or collecting themselves it's not like it would sit on ebay for a long time 
Am I going to get rid of it? <laughs> I'm on that fence. I am really on that fence. I really think that I would not miss it if I didn't have it. I think that I also wouldn't be upset if I didn't own it. I'm glad I read it. I'm glad I own it. Uh, I, I Now I know Batum. I always felt like it was a little overhyped, but now I know for a fact it was overhyped. I'll just say this. I think I already said it, but I'm just going to restate it again. If you enjoyed BRs, if you enjoyed Battle Royals, you'll enjoy Batum. If you don't, Battle Royals are not your thing, you probably won't enjoy Batum. I personally think it is way overhyped. I think calling it a masterpiece is an insult to mangas that are actual masterpieces of work, and it's very mid at best. You're not missing much if you don't have it, but I also understand why people want to collect it. So that is my opinion on Batum. I think it's overhyped. Let me know what you think down below. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.